All right, so I'm not sure what to even call this particular lesson, but I think I'll call it Let Them Tell You. And so the thought process behind this is that I see individuals starting off in this journey of changing careers, specifically getting into the Salesforce ecosystem. And there's a lot of thoughts around how hard it is to change careers and to pivot or to change your career path. I'll be the first to admit that changing your career is not an easy task. There is a certain time of being really uncomfortable where you're straddling two worlds. You're straddling your existing job and career and trying to, in your spare time and wherever you can, get enough experience and enough knowledge and learning and certifications in order to make that change and get into the Salesforce ecosystem. And sometimes that straddling time can be for several months or maybe even uh, one or two years. And I remember whenever I was going through that process, working as a technical writer and taking every opportunity I could in my existing job to grow where I was planted and learning Salesforce and volunteering for projects and even uh, presenting chatter at the National User Conference for the software company that I worked for at the time, There were some times where I had to get outside of my comfort zones and still also stay focused on my primary job duties. And so you may be having quite a departure here trying to get into the Salesforce platform, and I recognize and appreciate the discomfort that can come with that. But because of that, there's this propensity or tendency of individuals to kind of dismiss the value that they bring to the table and to underestimate your own abilities. And this may be you. And so I'm really intending this to be an encouraging talk more than anything else. This is not so much to teach you anything other than believing in yourself and your own ability to do this. And I know full well that you're hearing voices that you're not smart enough or you don't have enough experience or you discovered Salesforce too late or um, the market has become too saturated or whatever, fill in the blank, you're just not good enough or um, you have some sort of false belief or limiting belief in yourself that's keeping you from having success perhaps or some fear, uh, maybe you've not even gotten to the point of even trying yet to get interviewed, but maybe that's holding you back from just going for it. And I wanna give you permission to go for it. And you don't need my permission, you don't need anybody's permission in order to go for it as far as getting interviews and trying to land a Salesforce job. You will never know the entire platform. And with each passing day, you'll know a smaller and smaller percentage of the platform because the platform is growing at a quicker pace than your capacity to learn it or my capacity to learn it. When I started out, Salesforce was much smaller. They had acquired much fewer companies than they have now. And as they acquire these companies and these new technologies, they have that morphed into their own solution and offering. So the platform is becoming bigger and bigger with each passing day. So I would not worry about for a second that you just now or recently discovered the Salesforce platform. I don't want you to think or consider for a nanosecond that if only you would have discovered Salesforce back when I discovered it. Don't even think about that because when I discovered Salesforce, which was in 2012, which was about six years ago at the time of this recording, I had those same thoughts because I saw people that were succeeding on the platform that had been with it since the early 2000s or 2004 or 2006. And I actually had an opportunity to do a web to lead form on the Salesforce platform for a client back in 2006 or 2007. One of the side things I did in addition to technical writing was search engine optimization and web design. And so one of my web design and search engine optimization clients needed a web to lead form. And so I did that and then I promptly forgot about Salesforce for about five years. Now, when I was revisiting Salesforce and discovering it anew inside of a bookstore, when I was looking for what I was going to do in order to make more money in order to provide for my family and discover Salesforce development, you know, the immediate thought and regret was, oh, I could have done this. I could have been doing this the past five years, but I didn't. 
there's nothing you can do about that. All you can do is start right now. You know, and the saying, this is some hokey saying that someone originated, I don't know who, but, you know, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, and the second best time to plant a tree is right now. And so you can only control basically uh, today and what your actions and your immediate actions are today. And so I really want to talk about letting them tell you rather than you telling them that you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you don't know enough about the Salesforce platform, you don't have enough experience, you're too young, you're too old, you're too ugly, you're too pretty, you're too whatever. Whatever those things are that are keeping you from uh, pursuing a Salesforce job need to go out the window right now because now is the time for you to put this into practice and to actually go out there and run the gauntlet of trying to get these job interviews and land and secure these things and get them scheduled, these interviews, and then go through the process of actually walking through that door or taking that phone call or responding to that email and getting something down and scheduled this week. And that is what this week's assignment is all going to be about. It's nothing to do with a task that you're going to do in Salesforce, but something you're going to do untethered from uh, the cloud and actually dealing with people out there in the real world and dealing with humanity is I want to see you uh, go for a job and apply. Get yourself out there and apply to one or dozens of jobs and see if you can secure a job interview. Now, whether that's a phone interview, an in-person interview, or a series of interviews or a video interview, all these different things that we've been talking about, whether it's for a permanent role, a contract role, a temporary role, something that's just two weeks, something that's part-time, just get an interview and get through the process. It doesn't have to be a job that you're necessarily qualified for or something that you think there's no way in a million years you'll get this job. Just go ahead and submit yourself and see if you get a response. And if you get a response, really try and do well in the interview and learn from that experience. If you have any opportunity to record the audio from that so you can listen back and hear how you did and do some introspection and see how you can improve, great. But don't tell them why you can't do this. Let them tell you. The worst, the absolute worst possible case scenario in a job interview is that you're told no, that the end result is that they're not going to hire you. Now, if you don't go on these job interviews and pursue this, then you've already gotten that answer. The answer is no, because you're not even trying. So there's nothing but upside by submitting yourself into the ring of consideration here. So submit your resume, email recruiters, email and apply on the job boards and uh, be active in updating your LinkedIn profile as you go along or as you remember things that you've done in the past and keep looking, set job alerts so that on LinkedIn or the other job boards, you will be alerted whenever there's jobs either in your area or in your wheelhouse that you're qualified or semi-qualified for. And the key is, is just to get out there and start trying and start interviewing and finding out what you don't know and what you don't have a good answer to. And uh, you'll find that you'll get better at this. The nerves will be less with each time that you're interviewed. And eventually you'll get to where you actually enjoy being interviewed. You just got to trust that and look to the positive of, the, of how great an opportunity it is for someone to actually take time out of their schedule in order to talk to you about the possibility of paying you to work on the platform. I mean, are you kidding me? That is a huge opportunity. That's a huge honor. And so jump at the chance to be interviewed. Don't fear it. Clear your, your schedule, clear your calendar, and make it happen. The point of all this is let them tell you rather than you telling them why you can't do this because they might just surprise you and tell you, yes, you can, and yes, they want to hire you. And then before you know it, you'll be a Salesforce professional and you'll be just launching your own cloud career or going even higher than you ever, ever anticipated.